Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 8, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Well, looks like we are not quite done yet with vulnerabilities related uh, to uh, the msdt.exe uh, executable that, of course, was responsible for the Folina vulnerability. The next vulnerability, which is also not yet patched, came from security researcher Imre Rat, and well. It's a simpler vulnerability, it's not quite as bad as Felina, but still something that you should be aware of. Essentially, it allows an attacker to send you a specially crafted file. The file being used here is a DIAC CFG file. Now, this troubleshooting tool has the ability to download these diagnostic packages from the internet. They have to be properly digitally signed otherwise they're not executed so this prevents the worst uh, exploits here however before the signature actually validated the hacker may trigger a copy of the file into any directory the user has access to which could include, for example, startup folders. So the proof of concept here uses this mechanism in order to essentially launch the calculator on login. So first of all, this is an easy mechanism uh, to gain a persistence on a system after an exploit is uh, being launched. In addition, uh, this uh, bypasses the mark of the web and also Chromium based uh, browsers uh, do not necessarily uh, flag this. Microsoft Defender apparently doesn't pick up on this either. So uh, really more sort of a bypass and persistent mechanism than a code execution vulnerability. Microsoft did respond uh, to the researcher here stating that they're not considering this something that needs to be fixing. And uh, I think on your side uh, for the Defender, it's probably just the safest thing to do uh, to make sure that uh, these files are not being transmitted via email because that would probably be the predominant and simplest attack vector here. And going back to Folina, still more sightings of uh, the exploit being used in the wild. Uh, Threat Insight uh, did publish a tweet that they are seeing now the QBot malware uh, using uh, this particular vulnerability in order uh, to launch their malware. And then uh, Trent Micro has a write-up on the latest developments with the Deadbolt ransomware. Deadbolt has in particular been infamous in going after exposed and vulnerable QNAP devices. In some cases, they have also been seen attacking other network-based storage devices, in particular Aces Store. Some interesting statistics here. First of all, looks like 8% of the victims are actually paying up. Now, Aces Store, uh, that system is usually used for video surveillance. And I can see it where for uh, video surveillance footage, you're probably not all that terribly concerned if you lost uh, some past footage. It's not like, you know, for example, your standard network storage device where you often have uh, documents and uh, other important uh, data stored on uh, the device. As many ransomware families, uh, there are two different decryption methods. One is an encryption key that's specific to a particular victim. There is also a master decryption key that could potentially be used uh, to decrypt all devices, but uh, it's not really clear according to write-up by Trend Micro if that option actually works. And this would essentially then be where the vendor would pay for decrypting the customer's uh, devices. So in some ways, an extortion scheme against the vendor, but again, there is no evidence at this point that this will even work or uh, has even been attempted in terms of contacting the vendor. And Google released updates for Android. This particular update fixes one critical vulnerability in the media framework. I think we got like a critical vulnerability in that 
about every month and also three critical vulnerabilities in the system itself. As usual, you may have to wait for carriers and handset manufacturers to actually push updates to you. Well, that's it for today. And if you are here at RSA, don't forget uh, on Wednesday at 1130, we'll have our panel and well, uh, hope to see some of you there. And if you see me around here, I will have uh, stickers and the like. So uh, you can also pick up uh, Internet Storm Center stickers at the Sands booth if there are any left. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.